Okay, have you started making art with artificial intelligence? But the faces are looking a bit creepy? Well, I've got a hot tip for you. So this is an image that one of my friends made. She's an artist called Mary Oka. She's doing some cool stuff. So she's playing around with, I think this is Dali. And she's just putting in descriptions of her friends and making AI versions of her friends. And this has a lot of cool stuff going on about it. I love the hair, I love the pose, I love the makeup, I love the pout. I love, I love the attitude that's going on. But we got some problems. We got the eyes look all messed up. We got the mouth looks all messed up. The hand looks all messed up. The fingers are all wrong. So I don't think we can fix the, the hand at this stage, but I think we can fix the face. So there's this thing called, it's, they need to give it a catchier name. It's terrible, the name of it. So there's this thing here called GFP GAN. What is this name? No one's gonna remember that, GFP GAN. Anyway, so there's a couple of things like this. I've had trouble where the server keeps on saying it's unavailable, maybe too many people are trying to use it at the moment. But this one's simple. It, it's easy to use, but it just doesn't work super well. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So we'll clear this example image. I'll click to upload. I've got my Marioka test image. And this is just a, no settings, just one click. All right. It's pretty cool. Like, the hair is good. Look at the hair. It upscaled that really well. These, these things, they weren't actually designed to fix AI images, even though they use AI. They were designed to fix broken photographs or uh, fuzzy images. But it turns out that they just happen to work with AI. So it does a good job with the hair. The face still looks a bit wrong. The eyes look... I guess like they're painted on now so but there's another even better one check this out this one this one is also called GFP GAN but this is the GFP GAN inference demo now I think what that might mean is that if I open this this is the inference demo paper model. So I think they mean this is the one they released a paper about how they can go from a black and white image to a color image. And they also show how well it does compared to previous models. These are all quite blurry still. This pulse one, it looks good, but it doesn't look like the same person anymore. This middle one here, this, uh, this elderly lady, it ends up looking like Aphex Twin. <laughs> Come to daddy. So yeah, I mean, this is cool technology. If we can just get access to how to turn everyone's face into one face, that would be cool. Like being John Malkovich or something. Uh, but yeah, this guy down the bottom, he doesn't even have a moustache anymore, really. So I don't know. It's a different guy. It doesn't even have glasses on just got yeah so it's not quite right and then this is their version and it, it looks legit it looks legit good but it says if you want to try an improved model without colorization then go to this collab demo so that's this one that I'm recommending so this is an improved version but it doesn't turn black and white into color now, I'll be honest, this is the first time I've ever used a Google Collab and I was super intimidated when I opened it up. I was like, can't I just click a button or something? Look at all this. No. <laughs> do I have to like do a course on Python or something to do this? But don't be scared. It's actually super easy. It is, uh, and I'm not just joking. It is super easy. Let's go through it. So it says before you start, choose runtime type, Python 3, hardware accelerator, GPU. I can't even find that, but 
you don't have to. Look, runtime, runtime type. Where's Python 3? It's not even here. But GPU's already selected, so I just don't do anything. All right, move on. See how when you hover over these black sections, a little play button appears? You just hover over it, that little 29 turns into play. So, it seems like that's all you do. Click play, it says warning, this was not authored by Google, run anyway. Yeah, run anyway, it's fine. <laughs> and then this bit takes a little bit of time, it's doing stuff. So this thing's doing stuff, I'm like, cool, I'm figuring this out. Alright, I think it might be done. Step two, upload images or use the demo images. So if we click this, then this choose files button appears. And now we can just choose our file. Okay. It's starting to seem just like a normal, easy to use program. Uploading Marioka test. JPEG, 100% done. All right. Or you can use the demo image. We don't want to use the demo. Step three, inference. Push play. I don't know what inference means. It looks like there's some settings that you could learn. It looks like you can change the upscale you can change the background upscaler. Yeah, it looks like there's a little bit of stuff that might be fun to play with, or maybe this works well even just for upscaling. So it's created something. Results are in the results folder. Visualize. So this is this is still the test. Uh, the demo, I should say. Look at that. Visualize. Look at that. Look how good it is. Whoa. The hair is perfect. It's like unfrizzed the hair and everything. Look at the backlighting on the hair on this these little strands. But the eyes, the eyes are perfect. They got perfect makeup, perfect eyelashes, perfect the lips are now perfect and it's still the same expression. It, it's just nailed it. If we go back to this one, look at that. That looks awful now. It looks like it's made out of plasticine and paint. But this is a proper human being. <laughs> Right, so it seems like what it does is it crops it first and then it works on just the face. So, next step, we then visualize the whole image. Bingo, look at that. It's just perfectly cropped it back in. It didn't fix the hand so it's like we need another tool just for hands or something so but for the face and the hair it's just perfect I don't think you always get perfect results like this one this image it really it works step five download the results and it's done so this is what you end up with. So it gives you a little comparison image so you can see side by side how well it did. It gives you the crop that it found. It gives you the restored crop as a, a separated image. And then it gives you the final composite which is just brilliant so I'm just so impressed by that so I know it seems pretty intimidating at first this is my first time of using a Google collab but 
it's actually pretty easy when somebody's laid it out like this so I'm sure there'll be a new interface that'll make it simpler to use probably next week this video will be obsolete but <laughs> I thought I'd make a video that shows how to do it so how nice does that look such an improvement so realistic so this is this person doesn't exist this is complete artificial intelligence but it just looks so real I know this technique will probably be obsolete next week but I thought I'd make a video to help you out and say don't be scared of using a Google Collab notebook it's not actually as difficult as it looks all right have a good one see ya <laughs>